Good afternoon, colleagues and guests, uh, and welcome to this Children and Learning Committee meeting of November 2023. I just remind you that it's being live streamed and recorded, and for those online, make sure your microphones are off unless you're speaking, but also applies to people here as well, actually. So item one is apologies or substitutes, Liz. Thank you, convener. We have apologies from Councillor Shepherd with Councillor Boyd substituting and Councillor Wan with Councillor Fotheringham substituting. Also apologies from Mrs Jackie Wilson with Can and Tom substituting. Also apologies from Mr Callahan and Mrs Cheen. Thank you. Um, are there any declarations of interest or statements of transparency? Okay. Item three are the minutes of the previous meeting. Are these agreed? agreed. Thank you. And for the staffing subcommittee, are these agreed? <coughs> well, they're for noting. Thank you. Right. Well, we have a presentation from the Brave Lassies Blether here today. I'm absolutely delighted to be able to welcome them here. I was privileged enough to, to meet them in Montrose just a couple of weeks ago when they had the launch, and they gave a great description of what they're doing, most articulate. Unfortunately, we only have three of them here today, and there are seven or eight, um, so traffic and weather and all sorts of things have made sure that they couldn't be here. But anyway, they're here today to let you know what they're doing, and they are very willing to take questions. And I'm going to introduce Tash Riley here, who has been working with them from the NSPCC. Thank you, Tash. Uh, thank you for having us here today. Originally, we planned to have all eight young women here today to join you, but we've had car problems, exams, work commitments, um, and other late last minute cancellations. So we've got Molly, Yuhan, and Cara, who are here rep representing the campaign today. That's just the nature of youth-led campaigning. Um, I'm Tash, the local campaigns officer for NSPCC Scotland, um, and I've been delivering the project alongside uh, the Young Women's Movement. I'll give a little bit of background to why the campaign began here, and then I'll hand over to the girls. So Brave Lassies Blether is the third campaign within the Young Women No project, following on from Dundee and Perth and Kinross's projects. The entire project began following two pieces of important research. So in 2018, the Young Women's Movement released a report into sexual harassment in Scottish schools and revealed that 70% of students and 48% of teaching staff find the current curriculum does not adequately prepare students to discuss intimacy with a partner. And then furthermore, nearly half of both students and teachers which is 45% and 48% respectively, said the current curriculum does not adequately cover consent. Then in the same year, the NSPCC re released a piece of research that highlighted girls are more likely than boys to speak to childline counsellors, with almost four times as many counselling sessions provided to girls and boys. This gap is even more pronounced when looking at counselling sessions about pure sexual abuse, with almost nine times as many counselling sessions provided to girls than boys. With the findings of the reports in mind, the Young Women's Movement and NSPCC decided to partner to create a, a project co-designed by young women um, to tackle sexual harassment, peer sexual abuse and unhealthy relationships. So we've also partnered with Angus Council, um, who have been helping us to deliver the campaign across Angus. And we have eight young women from Montrose, Forfer and Kerry Muir leading the campaign. They launched their campaign on the 2nd of November at Montrose Football Club. Um, and I'll hand over to the girls to tell you a little bit more about the campaign, and then we can answer questions. Hi, I'm Molly, and I'm a former pupil of Fofer Academy, and we are three out of the eight members of Brave Lassies Blether um, from secondary schools across Angus. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We are really excited to have you all here. The aim of our campaign, Brave Lassies Blether, is to spread awareness about peer-to-peer -peer sexual abuse and support services available to young people to discuss their feelings with professionals. We also want to make sure that these support services meet young people's needs. By choosing the name Brave Lassies Blether for our campaign, we wanted to reclaim the term blether, which we felt often have had negative connotations to young people chatting without having much to say. 
We actually think young people's voices should be heard and we want to highlight the bravery of encouraging with support services. By the end of today, we hope more people will know about our campaign. We want to spread and support our messages and to start conversations to allow more, more voices to be heard. Initially, many of us got involved on the recommendation of our teachers. However, since getting involved, we have realised how passionate we are and that we are ready to talk about these issues. We want our opinions to be heard, to be a voice for others and to amplify the voices and experiences of others who have been affected by peer-to-peer -peer sexual abuse and may be unable to talk about it. We have an awareness of the barriers facing young people accessing support. This subject needs to be more open and addressed in society. We need support services to be approachable and not just exist after the fact when it may become more of an issue for, young, for a young person. More than anything, we want those affected to feel less alone. Hi, I'm Cara. I'm a pupil of Montrose Academy. We came together as a group and explored our understanding of support services. We felt that young people are taught that they can ask for help, support is available, but not who to actually ask or go to for support in these circumstances. We realised our education on support services was not consistent and sometimes unclear. We may have only heard about support services through PC, PCS classes, but not enough in detail. It's really common for young people to feel like others have it worse than them, and as a result, to feel reluctant to seek help, particularly, particularly from external service providers, as they may feel alienated. We realise that, that, that there doesn't seem to be a range of stepping stone of support between what is available in school and what can feel like extreme interventions like NHS mental health services, there is a gap that is not being filled currently. The support services that are available should be accommodating and work with the individual at their own level of need. Wait lists for these services can sometimes be six months, during which time a young person's mental health can be badly affected. During wait times, lines of communication should be kept active. Services should have check-ins so young people don't feel abandoned and put off. Support services need to communicate with each other more effectively they could share resources which may be available and signpost to organisations that may also be able to help in the meantime. Here is what we would like all young people to know. You are valid no matter what you go through. Your life doesn't need to be defined by, by one experience. You can move forward with support. Life has good things to offer. Reach out to services if you are feeling worried or concerned about any relationships, including problems with sexual violence or domestic abuse. There are safe and secure spaces to talk about your feelings and experiences. Different networks hold different spaces. Have a read and see how they can help you. Follow your understanding and gut feelings about what is right and wrong. You are not alone. Services are there when and if you would like to speak about your feelings. Hi, I'm Yuhan and I'm a pupil from Fofar Academy. And we would also like support services to understand that young people would like to speak to someone who will listen, understand and be comforting. Young people would like to feel validated, safe and treated like an equal. Services should work with people at an individual pace to ensure the person does not feel. Young people would like a space which is open, welcoming. Services should be available and accessible to all. The next phase of our campaign will involve creating resources from, for young people and professionals from support services. We plan to raise awareness through creating a strong social media presence and getting our resources and messages out there. We are hoping to work alongside other young people and professionals from various services for young people in focus groups or workshops. We are, when we have gathered more support and feedback, we are planning an awareness raising Awareness Raising Week early next year to help spread our messages throughout Angus schools. And here is what we need you to do. Be proactive. Help us encourage young people to interact with support services. Think about what you believe young people might need from support services. Be invested and ask. We would love to encourage you to speak to other professionals. Spread the campaign in your own network and please reach out to us if you need if you think you can support our campaign plans. Finally, we want to encourage every, every young person to do, be a brave lassie and blather about your feelings. Thank you. Thank you 
you very much. That was great. Really clear idea of where you're going, uh, and I think everybody would... Oh, yes, there will be questions. <laughs> yes, Councillor Bell. Thank you very much, and that was fantastic to hear. I'm thrilled to bits. Um, I, I was privileged to put forward a motion to this council about five years ago around um, gender, tackling gender violence, tackling sexual harassment, uh, and applying a gendered lens to all that we do. And, and I hope you'll be pleased to hear that you'll be pushing at an open door. Um, I also sit on the NHS Tayside board, and we're talking about how we support um, young people, perhaps who are on waiting lists to access um, clinical services like uh, ch the child and adolescent mental health, but recognising that there's a whole range of services out there that could provide that support. And in fact, it might end up with those young people not needing that higher level of service to keep them well um, and, to, and to keep them, I guess, out of um, more, more clinical-based services. But I would love to come along and meet with you um, have a conversation and um, support you in your campaign. So please don't hesitate to do that. And um, I'm just so proud uh, of you that you're, you're um, claiming the right to blather. Well done. Thanks, Councillor Bell. Councillor Whiteside. Thank you, and thank you, girls. It was really nice to hear from you all, and it's a really exciting project. I'm just wondering what kind of reaction you've had in your individual schools. Has there been a lot of um, interest, and has the campaign been really welcome amongst other young ladies in your schools? Um, so I've been able to reach out to my college in Dundee, and um, they've like put posters all up around the college, and like they're getting in touch with like their marketing associations, um, to hopefully move forward in the campaign for me. Yep, and I did get my posters put up around for for Academy as well, and our head teacher did say that he is going to have conversations with us about what has been talked at the launch, and hopefully we'll do something about it in school. I managed to get my head teacher to talk to PCS teachers on what they have been teaching already in, in class, and we've managed to put posters up around the school as well. Thanks very much, and we really appreciate you coming along today to talk about it as well. Are there any more questions? Well, oh, oh, Councillor Braze. Uh, thanks, convener, and thank you very much, girls, uh, or young woman. I'm much more comfortable with the term lassies because uh, when you get to my age, a uh, lassie covers everything female <laughs> up to the age of about 50. But I thought that was excellent. Thank you very much. I don't have a question for you. I have a, con a question for the convener, if I may. Um, during the years of COVID, when we had to do everything online, what I missed most about this committee was the young people that were frequent attenders of our committee. And my question is, are we going to have more of this, please? I'm absolutely sure we will. There's plenty to to showcase, and I, I think it is lovely uh, when we can see them face to face. Unfortunately, they'll have to go after this, so you won't be actually able to chat to them, but um, I hope you will take up the opportunity of, of speaking to us as individuals or, or in a group somewhere along the line. Um, I know Kelly McIntosh would like to speak now. Oh, sorry, um, Canon Tom. Thank you very much, Councillor. Can I thank the young ladies for that terrific presentation and ask them, um, are they getting enough, re they're talking about putting together resources and are they getting enough help and, and who's helping them put together those resources? That one's for me. Um, so... <laughs> Um, just in, in delivering the campaign, so NSPCC Scotland and Young Women's Movement, we're working in partnership to meet with the girls on a, on a regular basis. Um, Angus Council has been very helpful in helping us to, to make sure that that scheduled time comes with the girls in schools. Um, initially, it'll be looking at the, the resources and what their ideas are moving forward for young people and also reaching out to support services. Um, 
but it's it's early days in terms of what what the actual physical or um, you know virtual resources that might be be provided. Um, but it'll be definitely led by the young women themselves. Thanks, Ken and Tom. Uh, Councillor Speed. Yeah, thanks, convener. I um, I don't have a question. I really just wanted to say thank you to girls for coming along. Um, I know it can be a bit daunting uh, having to speak in front of everyone, but just to say you you did well. You absolutely nailed it, and your messages were certainly from me received loud and clear. So thank you. Everybody, but uh, oh no, no, Councillor Proctor. You're muted. Sorry about that. I'd just like to uh, reiterate what uh, uh, Councillor Speed has said. It takes great courage. Uh, and I really do appreciate the young ladies coming along here and talking to us all today. I uh, wish you every success for the future. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Proctor. Has anybody got any other comments to make? No, then Kelly McIntosh, Director of Education, would like to say some words. Thank you. So I'd just like to say I was at the launch too, and what you're seeing today is three quite subdued young women. <laughs> um, when there was a band of eight of them, they were much more lively. If any of you use Twitter or TikTok or whatever, you will see them um, and their real personalities. So they were, uh, I think they found this, quite rightly, a little bit more daunting today. We were quite nervous when they came in, but you've coped with it really well, so thank you. And as the Director of Education, some really hard messages there for everybody in the room to hear. Elected members will know that the relationship sexual health and parenthood curriculum has been in our improvement plan for a couple of years. We've been reviewing that, thinking we're doing some great work. And then when you ask the people that really matter, these young women come in and say we're not getting it right. And actually they are now part of the review of that curriculum. That's the really important thing for me. This is about young people now shaping what we will teach their peers in the future. And that is the best example of people see. You will know that pupil voice is heralded, especially in education. And sometimes we do that, but with this effect, very, very rarely. So I really do hope that you all appreciate that. So although the messages have been difficult to hear, they're also great to hear. What we say in education all the time in our central team is you just need to absorb the feedback. So although sometimes it's hard to hear that we're not getting it right, we will work with you to fix that. These young women are activists. We would want every single one of our young people to be activists, to stand up and speak out for what they think is right and fair. And that's what they're doing. And they will continue to do that. I'm sure one of the young ladies there is also not at school anymore. You heard her, she's at college. You know, so she started the programme here and she's continued it because it's, this is such an important piece of work. Most importantly, what they are doing will contribute to real change. And I think that the last thing I would like to say is this is all, of course, part of the wider equally safe agenda nationally. And every single person in this room has a role to play in standing up and making sure that gender-based violence is eradicated in Scotland. That is the aim of the Equally Safe Agenda. And these young women are playing a very important part in that. Thanks very much. Thank you, Kelly. I would like to say too that it's wonderful that you're taking this into college. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that if anybody goes on to university, that you'd be able to spread that as well, because clearly there are problems there. So. Um, you'll be well ready for, the, for that next step. So thank you very much. And if you want to leave, you can leave. Thank you very much for having us. <laughs> want to say anything else? Just want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll just give them a few minutes to leave. Right. Well, you obviously did 
uh, like that. I mean, they are they are impressive. And as as Kelly said, there were there were eight of them standing up, and really they were just so humorous, actually. So yes, they were quieter today. So uh, I think it's probably better if you know what happened to the uh, to the cameras if they would stand up. So. Anyway, let's move on to item five, which is the Tayside Plan for Children, Young People and Families, um, the annual progress report, and then the plan for 23 to 26. Um, this is a very high level report, letting us see the amount of collaboration which goes on across Tayside and shows us where our Angus plan sits within that framework. Um, I'm always interested to see how our youngest children, zero to three years, are doing, because that's where the poverty-related gap really starts. Um, it's vital to stress how important language development is at this age, and I feel a huge amount of work and effort is going into this, but unfortunately it's a bit to go, um, so we shall see in the future how that pans out. Now, Mark um, Armstrong is going to introduce this. Uh, report. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, convener, and good afternoon, elected members. Uh, as the chair of the Angus Integrated Children's Services Partnership, I'm really pleased to bring this annual report and forward-looking plan uh, to committee today. Across Tayside, Angus and our partners in Dundee and Perth and Kinross councils and with NHS Tayside and Police Scotland and a whole range of third sector and voluntary organisations, we have a extremely strong tradition of collaborative working in relation to integrated children's services. And this plan is really bringing forward our proposals for our collective agenda and our collective uh, set of priorities uh, over, the next, uh, over the next three years. You'll see from the, the report, there are two aspects to the report. There's our uh, report on our work over the last 12 months and particularly drawing out in the covering report some uh, some highlights and some successes over the, the, the period covered, and then also very importantly, the detailed and agreed uh, combined priorities agenda for 23 to 26, which is detailed as appendix two. And picking up on what the convener was saying about the importance of uh, very young children, you, you'll have noticed that the, the actual title of the plan has been amended for our forward look to incorporate infants within the title and really recognising the extremely important work that, that uh, is done by all our partners in relation to, to our very youngest children. Uh, before um, we take any questions on the plan, I would like to highlight to, to members and other members of the committee that we have identified a few errors in some of the data that's within the report. So on page 32 of the combined PDF, um, in the item that's second in the chart that relates to the proportion of school leavers uh, gaining five plus awards at SCQF level six or higher. There's a, a figure in that um, data set for Angus that's the, for 2017 that says 64%. That should actually read 34%. Uh, and then similarly in that same data set, the data for Dundee, the figure at the, the far right of that graph for 2022 that says 40%, that should actually say 30%. And then the other error that I'd just like to draw to your attention is in the, the next uh, block down on page 33, the proportion of school leavers from within the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation Q1 who've achieved five plus awards at SCQF level five or higher. The, the figure for Angus for 2019 currently shows 34% and that should be 44%. So apologies for, for those errors in the, the data. Um, but I'm really pleased to be bringing this report in terms of our achievements over the previous year, but also our plan for the, the forthcoming year. And within the committee chamber, I'm joined by a number of colleagues who all play a very active role across our integrated children's services planning system across the whole of Tayside, um, and we're more than happy to take any questions that the committee have. Okay, I'll open it to questions. Councillor Nicholl. Yeah, thank you, convener. On page 22, uh, Counselling the Schools, 
Um, I was just wondering if you could provide some further information on the referral system, um, if that's possible. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, each school obviously runs its own referral system and has an um, appropriate continuum of um, support in, for children who require it. So pupil care and support staff usually are the ones who would make the referrals um, through, but there'll be a range of other supports available for, before counselling would be considered. But it'll be different in, di in each school, dependent and agreed with each counsellor. That's okay. Councillor yeah. Bell. Um, Thank you, and I really value the evidence of the partnership working uh, across these, these papers. Um, I'm aware that Angus is a pilot site for Gurfey, getting it right for everyone, and there's a lot of talk in the, in the papers around transitions, and I just wondered if we could get a, a little bit of detail around the, the work that is ongoing around, around Gurfey. I think that's a really important transition, and it would be helpful to hear. Thanks, Ms. Audrey. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Um, as you say, um, Angus is a pathfinder, one of eight, I believe, um, across Scotland for getting it right for um, for everyone. And I think in Angus it's around reducing falls in adults, and um, so it's very particular. Um, there's not no such um, pathfinder in Perth and Kinross and Dundee, to my knowledge knowledge so there's not collaboration at this point in time but of course the Tayside plan is very much based on getting it right for every child in Gurfeck which is embedded um, and there is that's one of their key policy drivers for our Tayside plan and continues to be and that's been stated in the plan. Um, there is a lot of collaborative work that goes on in terms of Gurfeck um, across the three local authorities in Tayside and especially given the Gurfeck refresh this year so joining together in terms of um, strategic planning but also looking at refreshing um, our materials and resources and planning training as well. So I'm sure in time that the, the GERFI, which is built on GERFEC, um, that will evidence collaborative work in the future moving forward. Sorry, take later on. Thank you. Councillor Melville? Thanks, Commissioner. I've actually, I'm, I'm going to be cheeky here. I've got two questions. One of one of them is a, a sort of technical question, though. So, uh, if if that's all right, then I'll ask them both. Um, the first one is on uh, page 44, and it is about uh, free school meals. Um, we can see at a primary level that Angus has 17.5 percent of children uh, in primary schools registered for free school meals P67. Um, and then 14.12% of secondary. I just wondered if someone could could tell me why they reckon there's that difference there. So that's the first question, and then I'll 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 wait to ask my second. Debbie Beth, Beth Reader. Thank you for the question. Just um, so I'm clear, so it's the the differential in the percentage figures. Um, it will be down to population size um, and the size of families and where children are based. Thanks for that. Um, I, I sort of thought so. Um, and the, the second one um, is uh, on page 51, uh, where we're talking about uh, increasing the availability of the Solihull programme uh, in local areas. And I just wondered if uh, someone could set out both for the committee members and also members of the public who uh, might be watching what that involves and uh, the actions that we're taking to rule that out. Thanks. That would be Neil. Neil. Yeah, thank you for the question. Thanks, Convener. Um, the the Solihull programme is that there will be a two-pronged approach. The the reference on page 51 is about an upskilling of our practitioners across the, the, the Improvement Collaborative to know more about children's development, but specifically um, their development in, in terms of their brain from pre-birth. So that, that is a commitment that we've made across the Improvement Collaborative. And you'll see there that that's all 52 of our settings. So our 50 nursery classes are two standalone ELCs. And then I think just over 700 staff, and that's replicated. The Solihull Parent Programme is slightly different, although titled the same, and we will, we will use our family support uh, and nurture team in a slightly more discreet way, and we'll use a number of different family programmes, including the Solihull approach where required. So it's, it's slightly confusing, but it is different in terms of the, of the two approaches we'll take. Is that okay? Yep. Councillor Speed? Yep. Thanks. Um, I wonder if I can be really cheeky. I've got three questions. Um, I can and could cut it short to two if you would prefer. I can. I can. I think um, I'd prefer two. <laughs> uh, I can. I can send in a question. Perhaps the officers on on the other one. Um, so yeah, one of the key priorities um, 
is the health and well within the health and well-being uh, section is the implementation of the healthy weight plan. Um, I previously kind of raised that there's there's never any reference to eating disorders um, such as anorexia and bulimia, um, which we know can have a you know a significant and drastic impact on a child and young person. Um, with those conditions often resulting in you know hospital admission, um, they can be extremely complex um, in terms of their their nature. And I just wondered if um, anyone could point out where. Um, within the plan that there is reference to eating disorders. And my second question is taking into consideration today, the strong messaging today from our brave Lassie, Lassie's Blether um, campaigners, is there any changes or additions to the plan that we should be considering? Okay. 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 Thank, thank you, Councillor Speed. In relation to your question with regards to child healthy weight, uh, we're about to embark on some collaborative work across the whole of Angus, led by the uh, NHS Tayside Public Health team in relation to developing a very specific action plan and programme for addressing child healthy weight across our entire population. It was actually scheduled to start um, a number of weeks ago, but had to be postponed because of the, the impact of the storm. So I think they've reset the date for around the middle of December, and there's uh, a very wide range of partners um, that are going to be engaged in working together to, to co-produce that plan and covering all of the issues, including those I suspect that you've highlighted today. And we're, we're really going to be drawing and learning on the, the work that's already been done um, within Dundee on this, uh, this specific piece of work and then rolling that out and putting very much a kind of Angus flavour on the specific actions and the specific priorities. But that work will take place over the next 12 months and we would envisage bringing reports back to both the Integrated Children's Services Group and to the Children Learning Committee over, the, over that period. Is that OK, Councillor Speed? Yep, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your second question, Councillor Speed. Um, so in the Angus Education Plan, there is reference to the, our work with the Curriculum on Relationships, Sexual Health and Parenthood, and the work that the young women that were here today are doing will form part of that. You heard them reference that Similar work has been undergone in Dundee and Perth. Similar groups of young women are working on something to do with Police Safe Agenda. And I think what's important to say is this TRIC plan contains some of the work that we do collaboratively, but not all of it. We work very closely with Dundee and Perth on anything that we think will add value or save off officer time or reduce bureaucracy. Yes. And the fact that there are three young women's groups in place now and we are awaiting um, guidance from Scottish Government on relationships, uh, sexual health and parenthood curriculum. There's guidance coming out and on gender based violence. So once those new publications are out, we will um, just quite naturally seek to work with our colleagues in Dundee and Perth and the three groups of young women to make sure that their work is incorporated into how we interpret that guidance. I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much, Kelly. Councillor Whiteside. Thank you. Um, I was really interested in uh, the whole report, actually, but the paragraph about the university school of medicine um, and just joining the dots between poverty and health and attainment. And I just wonder if that's work that's going to be expanded upon in future. What page is that, Councillor Whiteside? Page 19. Oh, building on the existing relationship with Dundee University School of Medicine. Mm -hmm. Who would like to answer that? I suggest we come back to you with a detailed response to that. Unless, oh, Catherine, do you have details?
thank you very much, uh, Councillor Whiteside. Um, so, yes, I understand that our colleagues from across um, welfare rights um, in Tayside, um, together with um, Citizens Advice Bureaus, have been providing uh, information, and NHS uh, colleagues have recognised the value um, in making sure uh, that our um, students in learning in terms of going into helping professions recognise that connection. Um, so it's really, it's been about, I suppose, getting the learning from people's lived experience right into where it counts um, at the very earliest stage, because often people in distress um, might reach out to medical professionals first. Um, and as a first line of defence, it's helpful for them to understand the connection. So, um, yeah, I equally am excited to see um, that aspect and our welfare rights team are very proactive uh, in making sure that voice of lived experience gets into these places. Um, so I'm very much hoping that this is a model that we can um, grow into other professions uh, as well. So thank you very much for highlighting that aspect. Thank you. And there is already work going on with midwifery and welfare rights, and that's great that uh, young mums can get access to, to more uh, finance that they will desperately need in this at this particular time, certainly. Do we have any more questions? No, but comments? Councillor Melville, then Brace. Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, going back to the, to the Solihull approach on page... Um, 51. I, I wanted to say that it's really, really good to see that um, 737 uh, Angus Council staff uh, have been uh, trained in this approach uh, to date, which of course is the highest of Angus, Dundee, Perth and Kinross and NHS Tayside, and that's despite us having the, uh, the fewest settings. Um, so it's absolutely to be commended that we're ensuring our staff are adequately trained uh, in that way. So uh, well done to the officers uh, who are responsible for that, and I wonder if that sentiment could be passed on to, to the trainers also. Thanks. Great. Councillor Braze and then Councillor Speed. Yes, thanks, Convener. Um, I, I thought this was a really well written, well prepared and presented report and, and full of interest for me. Uh, and I was also very grateful for the glossary for acronyms that's on page 56. There are rather a lot of them, and, uh, and it's just as well because uh, they save so much space in the report. But thank you. Thanks, Convener. Yeah, it was really just a comment, just to say that I'm disappointed that I didn't get to ask my third question, just given how light the agenda item is today. Um, and, you know, taking into consideration just the significant challenges and pressures on all our children and young people and their families at this time. Um, and so, yeah, I hope to see at future children and learning committees, um, you know, maybe a, a greater uh, agenda items and greater discussion and debate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Wyside. Thank you, Convener. Um, I'd just like to say I'm really pleased to see the continuing focus on the UN Convention of the Rights of the Child and on our rights respect in schools. I think it's hugely important and particularly um, given across the UK, it sometimes seems that the human rights issue is not um, placed in quite such high regard. So glad to see it still is here. Thank you. Is that it? Well, Thank you very much. Two recommendations. Note the progress detailed and instruct that further progress report comes next year at this time. Do we agree? Agree. And now we've got uh, the, the last item on uh, school terms and holidays. Uh, Kelly, are you going to introduce this? Thank you. Hi. So agenda item number six outlines the proposed school terms and holiday dates taking us up to July 2028. These dates have proposed have been set in accordance with previously agreed principles. The most recent of these is the confirmation in 2015. So at this committee, following consultation with parents and carers, the October holiday period will remain the first two full weeks of October. So that was a previously agreed decision. As part of the preparation for this report, the holiday schedules for neighbouring local authorities have been checked. Full alignment is really not possible due to the different principles adopted in each area. Um, if approved today, a consultation exercise will be carried out with the stakeholder groups identified in the report. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Are there any questions or comments? Councillor Boyd. Uh, yes, uh, 
I can't believe, um, looking at the background, I can't believe it's uh, eight years uh, since I started the, ca the campaign to start the, the, the Save the Tati Holidays. Angus Tati Holidays are very special to us. I think the last time we went to consultation, over 8,000 parents replied to that consultation, asking for it to be kept the first two weeks in uh, October. This saves families a fortune, whether it's a caravan holiday in Scotland or a trip to Florida. Sadly, so many Angus residents can't afford a summer holiday, but can find the means if they can set off for their first full week on, in October, um, one week before Dundee, and then two weeks before the central belt then comes out. So I thank officers for going back to this consultation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Boyd. Uh, we've got two recommendations. Authorise the consultation exercise and note that the outcome will be brought uh, for further consideration in April 24. Do we agree? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. That's the end of this. We can put off the live stream now. Thank you. Can you switch off the